So here in South Louisiana, cypress, especially old cypress, is kind of a cultural thing. It's kind of like redwood in California or maybe aspen in the Rockies. Everybody wants old cypress furniture, tables, and beams in their house, etc., etc. So I um, have a friend many years ago who was going to build a house. He tore down some old structures, I think, on some family property and collected quite a bit of this stuff. Um, built his house, had a whole bunch left over. My neighbor purchased it from him, built his house, had quite a bit left over, and he just gave me these eight boards. I am going to make a 10 foot by 4 foot dining table for my youngest son. I've made tables for my older son and my daughter and myself, and this will be the last one. So, 10 foot long, that's what he wants. And that's going to be tough because that just barely fits in my shop, but we'll muddle through, make it work. Um, these are 16, so I can cut the bad ends off and get a 10 and then ended up with a five and a half or something which we'll make the legs and the stretchers out of and i have one or two pieces up in the attic if i'm short um they're really filled up with nails these have nail holes and they have a lot of nails too so we're gonna have to work around the nails and the bad spots but uh that's just what you do when you work with salvage lumber so looking forward to doing something besides working on a boat we're going to build a table a big table and a nice table So it kind of screwed up. My cart's not running, but I should have pushed it into the shed and get it and gotten it out the way. But now it is raining and we're having hurricane. I don't forget the name of it, but it's going to rain for the next four days. And I can't push it through the soft grass, so I'm just going to have to work around it. But anyway, I'm going to take my long boards, trim the ends, the rotten parts off the ends, and get like 10 foot, 4 inch pieces out of them all. And... <clears throat> Then there'll be a workable length and I'm gonna put them on this table. This is not usually the table I use to assemble things. I usually assemble things on the sawhorses, but I think I have a little bit more room over here. So that's the plan. Cut them all 10 foot and a few inches long, get them side by side and see what we got. And it's a good day for an inside project. Rain, rain, rain. So the thinnest plank is like one and seven eighths, but most of them are over so I'm going to uh, do a skim on both sides of the thin one and that's going to determine the thickness for all the rest of them. So uh, all the rest of them I'll bring down to this thickness. And so i got a bunch of passes through the planer. We'll get the earplugs on and uh, start the process. So my thinnest board is at one and three quarters. Um, and it's like 90% good. Still got some roughness on this side, but that's okay. I'll bring them all to one and three quarters. Then I'm going to glue them up in pairs. And then I'll run them through the thickness planer again. And then when I do the final glue up, they won't be able to fit through. The, look at that big old nail. When I do the final glue up, they won't be able to fit through the thickness planer. I'll have to do something else so got a bunch of planing ahead of me right now so planing all these boards down to the same thickness is not so much woodwork it's just plain old work they're heavy and they're dirty and most of them have a taper some of them are fat in the middle so if you start out with the fat end of the taper first you start planing and then it quits planing and you just pull them through and put them around again if you start out with the thin end first it'll go for a while and then get in a bind and then you have to raise the cutters um, you got to do that a few times until it gets a uniform thickness and then you can pick uniform passes um, it's real soft wood it cuts real easy made a whole garbage can full of chips and um, it's just you just got to keep running them through I'm taking a little less than a sixteenth of an inch of pass because that's one turn of the wheel on my thickness planer. So I now have my eight planks. Uh, they're all the same thickness and they're the right length. And I need to start gluing them together to form the tabletop. 
Um, typically the glue boards together, you'd run them across the joiner to get a nice um, flat face parallel with this. Um, I have a joiner, but it is relatively small compared to the length of these boards. And I don't have the skill or the strength to keep it flat on that joiner. So I'm going to use the table saw to joint them. Um, this wood is super soft, so if you even get it close, they'll pull up tight. I'm going to run both edges down the table saw. I am going to hit metal, even though there's no visible nails. There's pieces of nails and pieces of rust, and I just know this from experience. So we're just going to make sparks and probably ruin a blade, but that's just the way it is. I'm going to run both sides down the table saw, get them kind of straight and halfway smooth. And then we'll put them together and if I need to I can take the hand plane or my little electric plane and touch up some spots to make sure that they snug up next to each other um, without any big gaps that's the goal right here is to get a smooth tabletop without big gaps so at this point I've ripped both sides uniformly I started with five and three quarters and then went to like five and five eighths and yes I did hit a lot of nails um that's okay saw blades are cheap and now i'm going to match these up in pairs and see what i have to do to make them fit just a pair at a time that'll give me four pairs and then i'll do that again with the two doubled up pairs and then i'll glue the whole top together um, so after i glue these pairs this first set i can run them through the planer again but after that They'll be too wide and I, I won't be able to plane them. So I'll have to be more careful about gluing them and getting them flat. And so let's see what we got to do to make the first pair fit. Pleasant surprise. I got them lightly clamped with no glue and the joint pulled up like perfectly. I didn't touch it with a hand plane or a sander or anything. So I got two of them and they pulled up good and snug and they're straight. So I'm going to glue these two and i don't have enough clamps to glue the rest of them but uh we're going to use um we're going to use basically yellow glue so it'll be cured in two hours maybe i can get uh all four pairs glued today before we lose power and i can't see in here anymore because the hurricane is coming and the wind is picking up we will lose power that's a given so it's Thursday morning. We got electricity last night at 1030, which means, one, we're very lucky to have electricity. And two, uh, that means people were working in bucket trucks up till 1030 last night, which is uh, pretty amazing. But anyway, I'm talking about a Hurricane Ida. Uh, we just caught the edge of it in Baton Rouge. Um, not a lot of structural damage, but a lot of trees down, a lot of power lines down. But uh, we were lucky. It is much, much, much worse the farther east you go so anyway i do have all four of the pairs glued up now that i have electricity i'm gonna pass them through the planer and take a very light pass on top and bottom of these and then i'm gonna start gluing these together in pairs and i need to start being conscious of the best edge to leave on the outside of the table so that's what we're going to do today i'm going to manhandle these big long boards and get them planed and um start gluing so logistically this is going to be e easier even though the boards are heavier because it's not raining so i can start from outside and run inside where i got plenty of room so ain't nothing but a thing just got to get it done all right so i got my four panels laid up here this is the order i want them because this is a good edge for a finished edge and this is a good edge for a finished edge and now they don't fit as good as the first pairs because they kind of warp so I'm going to have to decide how to straighten these edges out. I think I might use a router and a straight edge. Let's get something set up. So I clamped my aluminum straight edge here. And I ran the router down it. And I got a pretty straight line. This is just a, a straight bit. And the bearing's not in play. That's below the wood. So I'm going to put it up next to the second piece and see how it fits. I probably have to do the same thing with all the surfaces.
So the first piece with, had a bow in it. I took about a quarter inch off the metal part and kind of nothing on each end. The second piece, I got it clamped up lightly, dry, and man, it fits pretty good. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. There's a little gap right here. But I could mess around with the router and have another oops. I had an oops right here. I could make it worse. So I'm going to call these, these two pieces fitting good. I'm going to glue these and clamp them. And I'll have to wait for the next two because I don't have enough bar clamps or probably do. But I'm just going to do these two right now. And uh, see if I can find a grocery store that's open in this uh, hurricane damaged city. So dry clamp on the second half is looking good except for the spot where the router lurched out of my hands. Well, it didn't really lurch out of my hands, but it went fast and the, the bit whips a little bit and gouges a hole. The rest of it looks really good. So we're going to put some glue on it and clamp her up. Okay, we have two table halves, tabletop halves glued and dry. We glued them yesterday. We'll take them off. I'm going to have to do that same procedure to fit the um, joint between the two. I'll probably have to run the router over them because they may or may not be straight. And the more you glue together, the less likely it, it is you'll be able to pull them tight with the clamps. It's really got to fit. So take clamps off. Let's see what we got. So between the router and the straight edge and my hand plane, I've got a pretty good fit in this middle section. And i got all my clamps adjusted. And I'm ready to glue. Now I know these pipe clamps are kind of out of favor with the hoi polloi uh, woodworkers, but they're so practical. You just uh, drop the short pipes and put in the long pipes, and they're good for a tabletop. I even had some 10 foot pipes to do a bed frame together. And when you don't need them that long, you put your short ones in, you use them for everything. So I'm, a, I'm kind of a fan of these things. I know they're better clamps, but uh, they sure are versatile. So take it apart, put some glue, clamp it, done for the day. And from the drops off the long boards, these uh, like five and a half footers, I picked out four of the better ones and I planed them to thickness and I jointed the back edge and um, I determined the length of the table legs. I think it's kind of a standard length. I'm just copying the table we have in our dining room. And I want the legs to kick out five degrees, so I have the saw set at five degrees and I'm cutting each end of uh, four table legs to get them all same length. They'll be the same thickness. I'll have one straight edge and they'll be the same length. Okay, I lied. Now I'm joining to get that back edge straight. I didn't do that before I cut them because they were just too long and awkward. So now they're short and manageable. I'm getting a straight edge on the back. So the legs are tapered from uh, four inches to two and a half inches at the bottom, I think, or something very close to that. And I put pencil marks and I'm just cutting freehand on the saw. And uh, later on I'll, I'll put this um, tapered edge on the joiner and straighten it out. So David dropped by and I instantly forgot to record video. Um, but what I did was I took the table legs, I split them down the middle, and I planed all um, eight pieces to the same thickness. So that was a half a table leg you saw me, saw in my hand. And I've got this old nasty piece of red oak and I'm trying to figure out if I can get what I want out of this piece of red oak because this red oak is mostly trash. But uh, we got it figured out and I got the boards out of it and we cut it up. piece of timber I got three pieces of red oak and we're gonna plane them down the same thickness as those parts of the legs and we'll sandwich the leg it'll be three pieces thick with red oak in the middle for strength at the upper joint and I'll show you that in just a minute so then we spent some time cutting up the oak and gluing up the first two pieces of the table legs first three pieces and we have no footage of that so this is my table legs. Um, I started out with the cypress 
but, and it's two inches thick, so I ripped it down the middle and planed the sides, and that gave me uh, the two cypress boards. Now, in the middle, I'm sandwiching some oak because it's not very strong. This is going to be a real heavy tabletop. So um, the laser is laid back at five degrees. It's just a measure, but it's just an angle that I thought looked good. So that makes it real simple. The top and the bottom is five degrees. I tapered it to what I like. And then the, uh, the little cantilevered truss, same thing, five degrees, five degrees. And then the center glue up section, five degrees, five degrees. So this is gonna go like yo. This is gonna be the second half, it's gonna be glued on. Now the stringers or the stretchers are gonna go right here. So instead of gluing this up solid and then cutting out a mortise for the stretcher, I just stopped it right here. We'll assemble the stretchers and then I'll put another piece of oak right here and glue it up. And there'll be two more pieces of oak here that will greatly make the table much more rigid having one of these sticking out at each corner facing the middle or facing toward the middle so um, I could have glued this at the same time it just would have been a complicated glue so this morning I'm going to glue all four of these doubles and clamp them and go help with some hurricane relief effort cleaning up some down trees so I'm going to do this clamping real quick and then we're going to shut her down head out okay so the second half or the outside cheeks of the legs are glued on and they're dry so I can take the clamps off this morning and then I'll need to cut two cheeks for here put one on each side any kind of hardwood will do because they're up under the table and it doesn't show it just needs to be strong but it is Sunday morning six o'clock still dark out I can't make noise so I'm gonna take these clamps off and uh, do a little shop cleaning here for a little while So this morning I was playing with dimensions. <clears throat> There's going to be a brace here that comes to the middle and goes that way. So it's one of these weird three corner joints up under here. <clears throat> and originally I thought it should be even 120, 120, 120 degrees. But that puts these legs either too far toward the side of the table or too close to the end of the table where um, no, this way, put it this way, and I don't think that looks right. So I'm going to make this joint a 90 and put the brace down the middle, and that'll leave two 135s. That's, that's no problem. Um, and then when I glued the table together, it was six boards that were about six inches wide. But by the, no, it was eight boards about six inches wide. But by the time I cleaned the edges and glued them, um, I'm at 144 a little bit instead of 148 and at first I thought no big deal the table feels like way way big but it pulls these legs together a little bit and if somebody's gonna sit at this end which somebody will sit at this end three more inches is a big deal so <clears throat> I went up in my attic and I dug around and I found a usable piece of uh, cypress and I'm going to add on to the side of the table. It has one good edge. So I got lucky because most of my cypress has nails on both sides. So in a few minutes when my neighbors wake up, it is Sunday morning. I'll plane this to thickness and I'll glue it on one side of the table. Doesn't really matter which side. And we'll let that dry. And I can continue work on the legs. I need to put it, uh, another layer on each side of this little brace and then I can start cleaning them up to get them all the same size. So I got my extra board ripped and I did hit a whole bunch of nails. So that blade's probably almost done for. But now I'm gonna run it through the planer and get it the right thickness and glue it onto the edge of this table and get all my long clamps back out because I put them all away. because I thought I was through with them and everything should be good after that. Now I'm finishing up the top part of the legs by adding a, another piece of hardwood to each side of the centerpiece. And this is like um, secondary wood doesn't show, so I think I have some pecan here, and I think one or two of them are sycamore. 
But uh, it's all good stuff. It's dry and it's been inside, so it shouldn't pose any kind of problem. So good progress this morning. I got the cheek plates glued to the four legs. Uh, I've got some pecan and some sycamore. Just used the hardwoods that I had here in the shop. And I've got the extra width board glued to the tabletop. And I didn't have enough long clamps, so I may do with piggybacking some short clamps four times and they work just fine. So kind of stuck now. Go see if we have electricity at the foundry. We've been out of electricity since Hurricane Ida hit uh, a week ago. Go check it out. So I now have my four legs and they're pretty much the same, but they were glued together by eye, so they're not exactly the same. Now, I don't have a skill set to make them exactly the same, but I can make them so close to the same that it won't make any difference. Um, so what I'm gonna do is the first thing, I'm gonna put them on the joiner and flatten these faces out. And then I'm gonna move to the uh, miter saw and trim the ends so that the two boards match up. And then I will reference that end and re-trim this top to the right angle. So then I'm gonna have the three outside faces all the same. Now the inside faces are not structural so I'll just trim this board back um, trim it close with the bandsaw and then I'll use the router with a, a bearing guide to get these straight I'll trim the ends straight and round it and uh, we'll have four matching legs for anybody but the super perfectionists will be happy with So here I'm just uh, trimming off some extra so I don't have so much to route off and I'm not getting up next to the, the um, good part of the legs, just getting close so, uh, so the routing is so much easier. Now I'm cleaning everything up with a, um, a long flush trim router bit with a bearing on the bottom and sometimes it cleans up with the first pass but sometimes the, um, the board on the bottom sticks out a little proud from the board on the top so you just got to flip it over and do it again. But by the time you do both sides you got a nice smooth uh, flat face and it's 90 degrees to the uh, side of the leg so this is just a easy way to glue these up and get them all shaped up and get them all the same size and uh, copacetic. So I now have for all practical purposes four legs that are identical. They're not identical but they're pretty damn close and I have a table that is wide enough because I glued the board on the edge so I'm gonna finish rough sanding it or probably down to a medium sand, trim the ends, and do the layout for the legs and the stringers on the bottom so I can get the measurements. And then while I'm assembling the little stringer deal, I can go ahead and finish the bottom and the top sanding and all sealing and patching the holes and all that stuff. Because once I get the measurements off of the bottom, <clears throat> I don't need it anymore to finish the leg structure. So looking good it's supposed to get cooler this week too or this coming week this is sunday it's supposed to drop down into the 60s at night it'll be more than welcome 
Okay, so the bottom is pretty well sanded flat, and I'm laying out the legs. Um, basically, I just started from each corner, came in at a 45, and where they met will be the center of the table, and I got a line here, although it didn't really need a line. Now, where to put the legs? That's a, that's a million dollar question. Originally, when I talked to Dave, he wanted them eight inches in from both ways, which would be here. But I, I don't know, I think the top's too wide. I think it's, uh, I don't think that's gonna look right. So I think they need to go here. They're not centered on the, the diagonal. They're off a little bit because the table's so much longer than it is wide. And I got four inches here, which is enough so that the bottom of the leg does not stick out past the table. So you can't kick it when you walk by. Um, so I'm not gonna do anything, I'm gonna sleep on it. I'm not sure where these need to go. Um, now the, the stringers that go under the table, that fit in this notch, it would be real easy if I made them the same width as this and I could just slide them in, get it all straight, glue it and cut them in place. Um, but it's a long span and I don't think that's gonna look right. I think it needs more mass. So I think I might have to make them bigger and actually have a um, tenon, cut it tenon on each end, which would be a little more tricky. But that's the way it is. So anyway, um, it's Sunday and I'm done for the day. And I'm just going to sleep on this before we move forward. And really all I need is measurements right now. So if I can get the measurements, then I can take the legs off. I can continue to prep the bottom and fill all the bug holes and all the screw holes and all the nail holes and sand it more and put a finish on it and then flip it over and start working on the top but for now we're gonna call it a day so i slept on it i slept on it for actually three nights but the funny thing is while i was sleeping i never thought about these table legs so i don't know where that term came from but anyway came back out here and i liked where they were from the other day and I went inside and measured our dining room table because it's a very similar design, just different types of wood. And I'm really close to what that is, so um, I'm liking it. Everything's good. This is where the legs are going to go. Now, this gives me a new length for the center brace of 66 and a half. And then dropping plumb from where this wood, where this joint's going to be on the brace. Um, that gives me 29 inches from here to the center. So I'm going to make them 31 for now just to make sure we're good. And we're good. So I'm dragging out a timber, a big board to cut up to make the um, stretchers that go under the table. And I'm realizing I'm at uh, almost 30 minutes long. That's long enough for me. So I'm going to wrap this video up. And uh, next time we'll finish the um, structure for the legs and the stringers and the aprons and all that stuff and get it ready for finishing. And uh, thanks for watching. Um, I know this is not boat work, but uh, I don't just do boat work and I'm kind of done with boat work almost. Although my trolling motor came in, so that, that's coming soon. <laughs> trolling motor install and um, chart plotter install and a couple of other little odds and ends. But for now, uh, thanks for watching.